On this week's episode of the Jesse T Show, the amazing, mighty, and powerful Zach and Heather Knight. Zach, welcome to the show. Welcome. Great Thank to see you. you. Yeah, Heather, great to finally meet you. Yeah. You have some great artwork there. We Thank can, you. We can, we can talk about tattoos. I'm covered as well. Yes. Um, but uh, thanks so much for both coming. Appreciate it. You know, um, you both have an amazing story, both what you've done in your careers, what you're building. There's so much to delve into from businesses to military to podcasts to nonprofits that your story is incredible and we want to share it with the world. So um, if we could just hear a little bit about Zach and Heather and maybe if you, you, you can start kind of in the military, you can start in the background, but just tell us a little bit about both of you. Okay. Yeah. Um, a little bit about my background. Um, I grew up here in Smyrna, um, started policing in Smyrna about 2010. Um, she came in five or so years after I did. Uh, so we worked together for a little bit. Uh, I ended up leaving to join the National Guard. Um, that was in 2017, beginning of 2017. Left for about 15 months for all the training, yep. basic to Bullock. Um, during that time, we started dating, and when I also during that time, when I was in OCS and I Bullock, um, I, we came up with the concept for night protection. Um, that's the business I own. I guess we own. She's the brains and the beauty behind it all. Um, came up with that concept and actually incorporated in October of 2017 yep. and then in January is when I actually came back from all the training and we did a hard launch uh, January of 2018. So tell tell the folks who are listening and watching a little bit about Night Pro and what, what business that is and how that serves people. So we're a threat solutions firm and we focus on auditing physical security. So essentially we'll go into uh, say this high rise building, we would come in here and look at all the security they already have in place and figure out what's working, what's not working, what vulnerabilities they have, what yep. threats they're facing in the area, and kind of do a comprehensive report of this is how to implement better security for what's uh, in this building as a whole. And we do it on the commercial and residential levels. Okay, and, and there's some unique uh, pieces to that that people don't realize and some of the things they can just kind of fix themselves, but you even get into like sight lines and different things like that. Talk, talk a little bit about kind of like what to look for, or what are some things that your company can help with when it comes to commercial or residential protection? So what we focus on is, it's called uh, SEPTED, it's yeah. Crime Prevention Through Environmental Design. Okay. So it's environmental design, kind of looks at the surrounding as well as the interior of the home and commercial space. Okay. Um, so that includes proper lighting, sight lines, making sure the exterior of the security is in place. And we kind of go from there, layers of security down into the core of what we're, of what we're protecting. So at a house, it would be your family, your jewelry, if you have a stash of cash on the map, Mattress, yep. we would. That I wouldn't would advise the, that, by the way. No, I, I, definitely, <laughs> I wouldn't. Right. You wouldn't. Yeah, yeah that would probably be a, a really bad spot for both of us. Sure, um, sure. Of our clients. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of like the the center of what we focus on, and we kind of build around that. Same in the commercial. You know, you, you're thinking we need to protect our clients so yep. they have a good experience, and then also employees. There's so much liability attached to. You know, having to provide security for your employees, yep. we want to make sure that that liability is covered as well. That makes sense. And so, there's there's lots to to double back on there. And I really want to bring in Heather and her experience with the the PD. And so we're working together at some level, both of you as police officers. Correct. Um, how did that? look, feel, and kind of transition into you leaving for the military, and did you stay with the PD, I think, for a little bit while longer after that? Yeah. yeah. So I moved down to Georgia in 2012, okay. uh, went to college, and then um, joined the police force, and through that I became the uh, community relations officer, yep. which also led me into doing these assessments for people, and um, through the PD we did them. And um, so went through all the training for that and about the same time that he had his idea I was talking to my boss about like you guys need to start this business and so you know one day he called me and he was like hey I really want to start this business he told me about it I was like I literally today was just talking about this so um, being able to bring the training that I got in I got from the PD and then his you know training through military and um, a few of the security courses that he's taken sure. on his own we just kind of brought everything together and collaborated on it. It's pretty, pretty cool. Pro. Right, yeah. and it's pretty cool because we focus on 
the crime prevention aspect from our PD backgrounds and then military is all risk management and risk mitigation. Yep. So we've really done a really good job of blending that and she's being modest. She actually has more training and experience in doing the residential assessments than I do. Um, so she did in the community outreach part. I mean, it was all focusing on yep. in the communities and HOAs and whatnot. So mm -hmm. she's done a good bit of it. What are some of the things that you saw doing the community outreach in terms of your role when you would go out there and do these assessments and connect with people? And is it just a lack of awareness and just general information? Like, what were some of the things you would you would find? Yeah. So a, a general lack of awareness, but also in the same sense awareness because these communities would come together and say something's wrong, you know. But it would take seven or eight car break-ins in a night yep. to get them to understand that you need to focus on your security yep. and so then they'd call us in and um, we'd go in and we'd do full neighborhood assessments so okay. we're not really focusing on full neighborhood we we would love to but sure. you know it's hard to unless you have a problem in a neighborhood it, you know it's hard to get people to yep. even think that yep. that's something they need um, but that's what we do we go in and from you know the front gate all the way to the pool area all the way back look at what's wrong with your neighborhood versus home assessments, okay. which leads into the home assessments because you can look at the their landscaping and everything and, and then push into the home. So um, a lot of what I did with the PD was um, crime prevention through environmental design. So you want to design your environment around you yep. to have the best security. Control it, prepare, prevention is probably a big key mm -hmm. to it too. Like if they see some sort of thing that would deter them. Right. For see lack of better say term. Something. Yeah. Yes. Lack of better term, some sort of scarecrow, like something that just yep. wards them off, yep. right? Um, before they can even come in and rob the cars. Exactly. Or, and I've had experience there too. Uh, we were living in Dunwoody at a, uh, like a condominium place and um, there were people that were breaking into cars. And, you know, I got lazy because I used to live in Boston and uh, before I went to the military, you know, it's you got to watch what you're doing up there and cover your butt and all these things and so living in Georgia for a few years I got a little lax a days ago I started leaving mm -hmm. my car door unlocked mm -hmm. and whatever and I didn't think that stealing car radios was still a thing but I came out one morning and um, my iPod was taken out of my gym bag my fault right and then uh, the car stereo like that was inside the car I didn't know that was a thing it was gone yeah. Yeah. and it was because people were just checking yeah. door handles and I was yeah. an easy target crime, and so crime of opportunity yeah mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, a, it's important it, to prepare for that. Yeah, absolutely. And a lot of people don't think of that, of that and um, and it bleeds into even just your general awareness, like the being at a gas station and stuff like that, yep. you know, just teaching general security awareness. It's funny, I was talking to my dad about all this stuff, and he's like, people do that stuff down there? I'm like, yeah. It's incredible. It, yeah. It's yep. a nationwide problem. You know, being you know, aware be, of your surroundings is, yeah. is huge, and like knowing... Um, you know, there's a lot of things you learn through the years, especially in PD, military, and all these things. And it's not common knowledge, but it's common sense once you know it, right? right. So access Absolutely. to that information is huge. Mm -hmm. um, so the, the Night Pro business and in, in, in protecting people and their assets, right, and their lives, um, it's a huge noble calling. And it's, it's, it's the blending of the best of both worlds, it sounds like, from the PD experience that you both have to the military experience. And so um, let's jump into the military experience. And, and there's so much that we're going to touch on in there. But um, kind of your experience with the military, walking through that, and then how it led to Night Pro, and then also your experience as being a military spouse or a mill spouse, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, I got out of that training and I signed up for the training and knock it all out. Yep. You know, you, they had an option. You could do it over two or three years because the National Guard, it's all spread out. Yep. Right. Yep. Um, so knocked out of that training, came back, went hard in the business for like two months and then found out we're deploying in about five months. Wow. So yep. and even harder. <laughs> build, build all that momentum. Yeah. Right. And then all of a sudden have to put it on pause, so right. to speak, or to a degree. Correct. Yeah. And that month six, we hit a really good revenue month and we saw that. There not only was the need, because there's always the need, but there was actually a market for it. Because yep. right now we don't really have any competition in the southeast working on residential and small commercial buildings. Good Everybody wants to focus on Midtown. Yep. You know, that's where the big money is, yeah. if you will. Um, Buckhead, so, Midtown, all right, that. Yeah. Right, right. Um, so we're trying to hit the masses and really build awareness as a whole. Um, but yeah, so we found out about the deployment and it's like, well, crap. Yep. Let's see what sticks and carries us through the deployment. Um, it it went really well for a little while and then i left and uh, i left october of last year okay and just about a year ago yes yeah. just about a year ago um, actually right at a year ago at um, the anniversary thanks yeah i think <laughs> welcome back <laughs> yeah. but i mean that was something you know in starting a business you have to create structures yeah. make sure everything's in place and as a newer business i mean we were at this point 
shoot eight months in business um you know we had some structures in place but probably not as much as we'd like yep. um so we kind of came up with a a game plan of heather was going to run the business while i was gone okay um as much as she could she was working her essentially nine to five at the police department and then after that if we had a client she would go to the client and keep hustling through as, as much as she could during this year that i was gone yep um in afghanistan you know technology has improved enough where we could communicate a little bit um, the first few months I was down at Fort Stewart, Savannah. Um, so that was obviously communication was pretty fluid. Yep. So the handoff was pretty decent for a few months. And then January, I got in country and it kind of Wi Fi shoddy. You had yeah. 2G. I didn't even know 2G was. I didn't know that was still a thing because we're working on almost at 5G now. Right. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. So we had a little bit of Wi Fi, but it wasn't anything fantastic. Yep. So really, it turned over to her being full fledged, make decisions, handle business, and do what she could in her 18 hour days. So what was that like from you from a communication standpoint? Because even in general relationships, now you have the, the distance between you, you have a business to manage, you have your relationship to continue moving forward and mm-hmm. not being, people don't realize that are not in the military, like not being in front of someone every day, just in and of itself can be a burden. There's yeah. that closeness, that conversation. Um, what was that like for you? It was a completely different experience than I was ever used to. Um, The communication, I think, actually made it harder because we communicated on a pretty regular basis. Um, But then text or email, there's something something. we across. Yeah, Yeah. exactly. So you know, the whole when he's on missions or anything, and you don't hear. I think it made it worse almost because it was like. Okay, when are you getting back? When are you going to text me? Because it wasn't a daily, at least, like a, yeah. hey, I'm still here. Your mind starts to wander right? yeah. in terms of safety, at yep. the very least, right? Like, is he okay? Yeah, yeah exactly. So. And at my level, I was a platoon leader going over there, so I was in charge of about 30 guys. And it's interesting how the mill spouse community builds because she's like the de facto leader on the military, uh, on the spouse side. Yeah. So all the wives would she would be bombarded on this side on our on this side of the water and be mm-hmm. like, hey, what's happening? Do you know if my husband's okay? Yep. She didn't even know if I was okay. Half the it's time. almost like a team leader for the military spouses. Like you yeah. kind of would be the connection point and just like. And how was that for you? Did that become stressful and like people yeah. were clamoring for your time <laughs> and information? Yeah. yeah. Um, it was. Um, it was interesting because he's not somebody who is who was out you know in a different part of the country running the operation like he was still with them you know 100 sure. percent. so um i i had i was like i have no information i know nothing i know oh, what you know yeah. so um and a lot of times the stories broke here about things before they would even be back from their mission that's incredible so we knew about you know deaths that happened in yeah. afghanistan through the news through, through or, the news yeah. Yeah. before he even returned so that was the you know that was the scary part was there ever a point where you didn't hear from zach or or uh maybe a teammate team member over there um that because you didn't hear from him for so long you started thinking they were gone mm-hmm. yeah yep um there was like a 12 hour gap from when the story hit to when he texted me and it <sighs> was like yeah mine just runs what were you doing crazy. during that time so 12 hours of like <laughs> pacing like what, what are you doing um, yeah so that was about the time we were selling our house okay and we needed a new deck so I okay built a new deck <laughs> <laughs> so you put um, your energy into that <laughs> Not that, like, <laughs> we had work. like seven boards that rotted <laughs> yep so i literally i took a sledgehammer to the boards and i just good for you so you out. physically did the you didn't hire yeah. someone to come do it you went out I, there and you got I to did work and i couldn't fix it at the end um <laughs> so, but, there, there was a fixer that yeah came at in. least but you it tried. was the last board that wouldn't fit in and that's all he had to come fix was just shaved down good the for last you board, so. good for you so you took that that stress that anxiety the not knowing and you channeled yeah. that energy yeah so you, you're, you're realizing how to to play off of each other and how to be supportive of each other even if it's you know worlds away yeah and so now you hear back 12 hours Hours later did you want to like smack them kind of thing like because I feel like people 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 get that like that like that like they're like oh what like like growing up if you don't call your mom and then you show up like why didn't you call me and she's so upset right. right if you're out with your friends and so like was it that kind of feeling but then relief at the same time like how did you feel I think it was just mainly relief Good. and just like yeah. can because um a lot of the I heard from him before his guys spouse has heard from yep. their guys because he gets back before yep. I think is yeah. how it worked. I don't know. I wasn't there. <laughs> I had um, quicker accessibility to get yeah. all the information out yeah, and try to so, keep it calm. Yep. I, you know, I'm still, I know he's safe, but now I'm like, okay, what do I tell these these women? Yeah, how do you play the telephone game? Like, right. what do you relay to because, them and how do you say it? Right, because 
if I'm like, hey, your husband is back and okay, but he doesn't have access to phone yet, now they're like, well, why aren't you texting me? Yeah. You know, so there's a lot of like fine line of very fine but dance. What? Yeah. What yeah. can I? What information can I release to them to keep the peace between other relationships? Yeah, exactly. You know, because so. you because you don't want that getting back to, right. to and like uh, creating a discourse in the team potentially, right? Because yeah. you know, he said, she said, kind of thing, or didn't yeah. say whatever. Yeah. And so um, there was a story you told me, and uh, you know, let me know if we can talk about it. If not, but there was a a mission that you went on, an op that you went on, and um, for the most part, like you've always had your people come back, right? Like your people always came back, and they were healthy, and there was some little things, but there was a couple a couple situations, or one situation in general, where there was some uh, SF guys with you. Can you talk a little bit about just kind of that op, or is that like like kind of? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's all been put out in military. Okay, times so now, it's it's out there. So, okay, yeah. 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 Um, um, so the way the deployment was set up, um, we were out on a outpost with a special forces team, which is made up of ten guys that are essentially elite specialists in their particular area. So mostly like, rangers, or no, no, no. So they they were not even ranger. Most of them were like ranger tabbed, if you will, but never like yep. ranger battalion. Yeah. Um, so, but they were like specialists in communications, specialists in weapons, I two yep. of each, okay. right? Um, so they're kind of like the gurus that can do anything. Sure. But then my guys being infantry or the muscle attached to the operation. Yep. So 12 guys obviously can't do hard, 10 guys can't do a whole bunch, but you throw in 20 of my guys and now we have a little bit of a fighting force. Yep. Um, so we, we ran an op, I was actually not on the op, I was in the uh, command center, if you will. We had a little you know computer screens yep. and whatnot where I was watching satellite. Like a little outpost so. kind of like away a little bit. No, it was actually on, on the actual fob. Was it? Okay. Yeah. Okay. So most of the, the operations we ran were within 15 to 20 kilometers from where we were. So yep. it was kind of the backyard we were fighting in. Sure. You know. Yep. Um, and I was in the command center where it has all the satellite feeds, all the drone feeds, all of that. And you can show like the progression of real time intel to Correct. be able to report back if you need to. Correct. Yeah. Um, so my guys were on this op, and we'd already gotten some intel that the Taliban had reinforced the village we were attacking. Um, there were actually three different special forces team on this operation, so it was a massive operation. Yep. And the, but the insertion points were you know a mile or so apart from each other or more. Okay. So we were kind of just hitting this massive village. Um, and everybody's pretty much on foot at that point. Yes. Through the terrain, so they're uh, running and trying to get to these places. Yeah. yeah. So it's a helicopter insertion. Yep. So they go in maybe 500 meters out of the village and then make yep. your way through. And the way the special forces guys work, they ha we partner with the Afghan National Army. So essentially, we train them up, and you know, two, three, four, five hundred of them were in front of us. Yep. And we would essentially push them and have them trying to get them as sustainable as a military. Sure. So they need the experience of clearing a village, and then we would go back and do a deep clear. Um, so on this op, they were the Afghan National Army went through, cleared. By the time they went through and the American forces came through, um, our guys were actually ambushed. Um, so they waited for the Afghans to get past and then start opening fire when they saw the American uh, American uniforms. Um, so watching it unfold, I mean, there's like IR feeds and everything. So I'm actually watching the battle unfold on the satellite. Um, and you can see guys just dropping left and right. Oh. It was a huge, I think the Afghans probably lost 60 or 70 guys. We lost, we had two that were killed during that operation. And when it first comes out, they don't release names over the radio. Um, you have essentially your initials and the last four. Yep. Um, and yep. they put that over the radio. So you have to like scroll through your Rolodex. I don't remember you right. know, who right. the last four are. So yep. um, they put that information out. And that's on my end, that's like, instant communication blackout yep. you know that's where the 12 hour gap comes from yeah until the military can contact the families and say hey your spouse or yep. whoever there's is, a process they have to go correct. through yep yep um so we lost two guys in that uh, one guy was a e7 he was a green beret um and then another guy was an e4 he was an eod attachment to the special yep. forces unit yep um so he was a younger guy um his name was joey colette and he, was, he essentially became one of my guys. Um, he hang, hung out with my E4s. Cause yep. As an E4, you don't hang out with the E6s and E7s, right? right. There's, a hierarchy, There's a, hierarchy a hierarchy to it, yeah. Right? yeah. So yeah. he hung out with my guys that were younger, about his age. Um, so we essentially adopted him into the platoon. Um, and that kid, he was 
he was the one that had the crazy stories. He was like the the shiny light in the dark place. Sure. Um, Got you through some tough times. He did. Yeah. He did. He always made everybody laugh. Yep. He'd be doing silly stuff. You know, if we had unexpended ordnance that he had to blow up, he'd take it out in the field. And one day he was sitting there like wiring it all up, ready to make it blow. And he's like, you know, when we blow this up, they're going to get the shrapnel back in the fob and start laughing about it. Like, ha we're going to make it rain on them. <laughs> yeah. Right. Make it rain. Yeah. Right. Just silly <laughs> stuff like that. Um, but he was one of the ones that was killed during the ambush. Okay. Um, that was really tough, wasn't it? It was. Yeah. It, it hit all my guys. I mean, it was one of those that we, <laughs> everybody broke on that one, yep. you know, because he was just that one kid, like, man. Yeah, I mean, he, he made you happy, but you had a, you had looking at him almost like a little brother or definitely right. a friend that you wanted him to succeed and do well, exactly. and now that person's gone, and it's like a hole in the team. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and that was where the report came out on Military Times, like, two Americans killed in Afghanistan. She saw that, and I had you know a list or several missed calls, mixed, missed text messages because she yep. knew I wasn't on that op. Yep. But mm -hmm. you know, I, again, communication blackout, so they don't release names. It's just two Americans killed, and that's all that they work on. Mm -hmm. Man, um, and they knew like they put in the Providence and all that stuff, and it. I knew exactly where he was, and so like <laughs> I knew it was somewhere related close to him. So yeah, it was rough, and the. Um, media outlet would list the area that they were listed or that they were in so you know North Kunduz or something like that so knew exactly where he was yep. and then you match that and you're not getting communication and you just start to spiral out of yep. like uh, fear, anxiety. What can you do? And you're probably are you texting like crazy and mm -hmm. calling and still yep. nothing for twelve hours? Yeah. And, oh my goodness. And then the, the other wives are like, "Have you heard anything?" And like. And it was kind of like this for the first couple hours. It was like, do you text the other wives? Do you make them worry? Do they not know yet? Like right. what's going on? It's a whole so, dynamic. Yeah. And it's, it, I'm assuming this is the first time in his military career that this kind of event happens. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So there's no SOP. Like there's no guideline no. saying this is the way to kind of go about it. You had to yeah. go on the fly. Yep. So what did that look like? Did you, were you able to kind of come through it? Uh, do you feel like you did a pretty good job handling the yeah. situation for the, for the wives and then for getting in touch with Zach? Like, how did that work? Um, so he had a, a main group, his platoon leaders of like four or five, I think. Um, yes, no? Yes. Okay. <laughs> um, I don't know what you were trying to say. Like, the, they had a, you had a core group of like five or six people that were your leaders. Above me or at the FOB? At the FOB. So... No, like that you were in over. You had Yes, so squad leaders, squad leaders. Yeah. Yep. platoon sergeant. So yep. there were four or five so, guys that were like my immediate subordinates that... So those were the, the wives that I was... Connected with. So you had like with. a little team of five or six wives that and you would report had, to and connect yeah. with. Okay. Yep. Um, and so I, I messaged all of them and we actually were kind of like, well, let's all just meet up and, you know, hang out and, and figure something out. So... I dropped everything. I had a part time that night for the PD, yep. and I dropped the part time, and I went down, and um, we met in Griffin, where they drill out of, and we just kind of sat around and waited. <laughs> wow. And, and what was the time frame from when you got to Griffin to when you heard first word back that people were okay on his team? Like, what what was that? Um, it was probably about four hours. Okay, so it's still a good chunk of time. Yeah. It wasn't like right away. Four yeah. hours is an eternity when you want yeah. to hear something <laughs> right away. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Okay, and then now moving from that situation through to, was that the last deployment? Or was there one more deployment? No, that was the last one. That was the last so that one. Was what, that's where I got back from that deployment okay. in August, mid -August. Okay, and that's this year. Correct. Yeah, like so you're just, six weeks you're ago. fresh <laughs> off the boat, so <laughs> yeah. to speak, but yeah. back to Georgia. Right. And so now coming back to Georgia, August 2019, just a couple months ago, what happens? And I, I know that there was a couple things you want to touch on to really make sure that, like, you you sh shine the light on what what Heather did while you were gone with like, the house and some other things. So, right. do you want to talk about that real quick before getting yeah. To that? Yeah. Yeah. So one thing that I think a lot of people outside of the military don't realize is how much male spouses are undervalued. Yep. Um, saying that Heather was a rock during it all is like an understatement. Yeah. Um, where I was, I didn't really have a peer. And you can't talk down in the military. You can't go to your subordinates and say, hey, this is what I'm dealing with, because yep. you have to be that figure, yep. right? Um, so where I feel like military spouses are so underrated is she was my sounding board. So if I had a bad day, like during this operation, I couldn't go to my guys and 
weep in front of them, if you will. I had to call her, and she's the one that was on the phone that answered the phone. You know, so not only was she working full time, running the business, she got her master's just submitted her caps up for her master's like two weeks ago. So she got a lot of her master's done. Um, launched the nonprofit, bought and sold a house, or sold and bought a house, which is her, her first foray into real estate. Okay. So that was a stressful situation sure. as a whole. Caution to the wind. Right. Just, just ready to go. So yeah. All this going on. And then she has to still be available for my phone call. Yep. So you know what I mean? Yep. So I think. The military, we get an applause for being, hey, y'all went and you served, yep. but you forget about the story at home, which I'll never understand because everything she juggled during that is like, I kept things imagine. afloat. Right. Yeah. Especially mean, at that level, different. too, because a lot of times, and, and you know, obviously, um, uh, you know, I look at it, my short service that I had, I was I was thankful and people say, thank you for your service. And I was like, no, I this was fun for me. Like, I, I enjoyed it. Like, I liked it. But um there's the other side to it where even if you don't have a business or a nonprofit or a podcast that you're building or you know something like that, just just being a military spouse in general on either side, male, female, whatever, even that in itself is hard. Never mind everything else that you have going on. You're getting your master's. You're still continuing your education. You're trying to keep people involved in his his group of people that you know their their military spouses look to you for all this. So, um, what was your mentality through all that? Is it just like there was no other choice but just to get stuff done? Kind yeah, of thing. Kind of. It, yeah. it was stressful for yeah. sure. There would be days where I'd call him and I'd be like, I'm I can't do this. Like sure. we're, we're done. We're going to put the business on hold. I don't know. Yep. You know what? the next step to be but you know you just got to keep pushing forward and have faith and just yeah, take it day by day figure it out and uh what were some of the conversations coaching uh leading each other that you kind of helped get you through some of those storms was there anything that you rely back on or kind of like fall back on and say you know use this for help or inspiration like what were some of the support services man i think <laughs> so the college she went to here in georgia was university of North georgia which yep. is a military college um, mm -hmm. she wasn't in the rotc program but was in that culture. Sure. It's integrated in the right. community. Oh, for sure. So, Blades into it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And on top of that, her being police, she has a little bit of an understanding of military background. For sure. Mm -hmm. So I would say I'm not a gentle person when it comes to <laughs> inspiring, if you will. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I know there were times I just said, hey, you have to do this. And I'd give an order to her, if you will, yep. because that's what I'm used to. I mean, over there, it's like you give an order. And, it and you're in the mind frame of it. Correct. Like you're in the middle right, of it. So you're right. giving orders every day, all day. Absolutely. Yeah. How did so, that work for you? It, uh, how does it work for any husband, <laughs> right, right. let's be honest. Usually never Military the way the intended is. <laughs> Which is true. Yeah. So, but I mean, that, and I think that's kind of where our communication had to grow was I yep. would bite her head off more or less and say, Hey, you have to get this done. Yep. It's a no failure. This needs to be done. You need to keep up with this and you have to do it this way. My perfect ideal way. Cause my name's on the business. So sure. I'm very particular about it. Sure. Um, and well, I guess at this point we eloped what three weeks before I left. So that's a whole nother funny story. I want to hear yeah. about it. So if you're cool with telling it, it was one yeah. of the most interesting, <laughs> unique ways. And I think it would be great to tell that story. You have so. to hear both sides. Yeah. <laughs> I've heard his side. Let me hear your side first. Can I hear your side? Yeah. Your perspective? Um, so we have this, um, here, he had this business conference to Vegas yep. and, um, I was like, was this thrive? I'm, you went to thrive? Yes, yeah. Okay. Yep. Okay. And, uh, I was like, oh man, I love Vegas. Can I go with you? Like, no. <laughs> I was I just like, shut it down. Yeah. And I was like, I'm business okay. mindset. It's like, this is a business <laughs> right, trip, right, not a luxury right, trip. Right, right. Right. And I'm like, I won't bother you. Like, I just want to go hiking and all this stuff. He's like, eventually, you know, I'm always right. So, <laughs> as every woman is. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> does your wife listen to right, this? Right, exactly. Yeah. It. yeah. <laughs> you heard it. It's documented. Yes. <laughs> so, eventually, we get it all. Um, figured out so we the morning of the trip or whatever I head out to his office and um, we get lunch and he's on the phone and he's like oh I just made these reservations at this fancy restaurant and I was like okay <laughs> cool yeah. so we um, get on the plane and get going and we land at like 4:45, and I was like, "What time are those reservations?" And he's like, six o'clock." And I was like, yeah, the hustle. We're not gonna make it." Right. Yeah. <laughs> and he's like, "We'll be fine." And I was like, "We're not gonna make it." <laughs> so we get to the car rental place, and there's a huge fiasco with that, and we end up getting upgraded to a white Wrangler, and I have a Wrangler. It's my dream car, so <laughs> upgrades to a white Wrangler, and we do that, and then um, 
get to the hotel at 545. And I was like, you need to call this restaurant. <laughs> and t- he told me he put like $50, oh, $60 yeah, down. Yeah. You know, to, He's really selling it at this point. Yeah. <laughs> and so I was like, we're going to lose this money. You need to call them and tell them that we're going to be late. He's like, okay, fine. So he calls this restaurant yep. and is like, hey, we're going to be a little bit late, maybe like 715 Okay, cool. Hangs up. I should have known right there that that because what restaurant it was way would too easy. yeah <laughs> what restaurant would just be like okay yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I should have known that there was something up at that point. Um, so we get um, I get ready. So or pause real real quick. Just like every woman. Um, oh yeah. <laughs> hunger changes a woman. Hangry man. Hangry. Yeah. So at this point, her hunger. <laughs> Fed over and started yes. breeding this, yep. uh, ignoring yes. everything else that was happening. I get it. So. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I was hangry. Mind you, remember the last time I ate was lunch in Georgia at 11 a.m.? Yep. We're now in Vegas at 6 p.m., yep. which is like 11 p.m. Uh, right, like, like the time zone change. Yeah. 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 It's been like yeah. 12 hours since I've eaten. So you're hangry. <laughs> I'm hangry. Yeah, extremely. <laughs> so. I get dressed or whatever, and I was like, oh, does this look okay? And he's like, eh, it's whatever. And I was like, well, what should I wear? He's like, oh, it's fine. I was like, okay. So we get in the car and we go. You want to describe the outfit? It was a black romper, and it was super cute. And it was like pantsuit kind of thing. Yeah. Black. Um, <laughs> That's the key here. Yeah. <laughs> he right. knew where we were going, right. and he let me walk ah, out of the hotel. Couldn't get away. He was black, in. Right? <laughs> he was like, like all in. Yeah. <laughs> so we get to the, we pull up at the Bellagio, and I was like, oh, cool. And he was like, I really want to go see the fountains. And I was like, it is 7.01, <laughs> and you called this restaurant and said we'd be yep. there at 7 o'clock. Like, we need to go. And he's like, no, but I really want to see the fountains. So I was like, they run every hour on the half hour or something like that until 5 a.m. Can we there were a lot eat? more expletives attached yeah. to this yeah. at this point. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. so he's like, no, I just, and he just keeps walking. And I'm just like, oh, I just wanted to strangle him. So we're walking out to the fountains. And I don't know if you've ever been out to I haven't been yet. So at nope. the Bellagio, there's like a an upper level and then a lower level okay. to watch the fountain show. And so we're at the upper level and we're sitting there waiting and I'm like, ah, can we go eat There's yet? no way you're you know? enjoying the moment because you're hangry and you're late in your and mind. You're late. So like yeah. you're, you're just like freaking out. Yeah, yeah. I'm just like over it. And he was like, I don't like this spot. And I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> 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 you know? Has he ever acted like this before, like in your All relationship? Okay, so this is, this is, this is normal. Yes, yeah. So he's playing it to a T. Yeah. Got it. Okay. All the time he gets on my nerves. Because um, if I tried doing something like that, it wouldn't be like my normal MO. My wife would be like, something's up. Yeah. You know, but like this is normal. So like, you, yeah. you, like you're like just. I'm just turning yeah. into a rage monster at this yeah. point, here. <laughs> like hulking out. Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we walk down this path and whatever, and then he like shoulder checks this guy, and I was like, "Wow, what are you doing yeah. right?" Yeah. And it didn't like it. I was just like, "Whatever." Like the guy Hunger didn't had taken her. Yeah, <laughs> like the guy didn't stop, and he didn't. So maybe it was an accident. I don't know. So we keep walking. It was an like, apparent shoulder check too. It wasn't like so. It was just like no, rushed. Like he like leaned yeah. into him a little bit. And it was like I should have known what was going on, right? <laughs> But it was just because I, like, looking back, like, hindsight, I, wa- I watched him do that, and that was, went through my mind, but sneaky. I never... I yeah. think I'm sneaky, yeah. but I'm not sneaky. But I never, like, put two and two together in that moment. Um, and so we keep walking, and we're sitting there, and all of a sudden, this guy taps me on my shoulder, and he's like, hey, what time did the fountain start? And I turn around to tell him, and it's my dad. What? So that's who he shoulder-checked what? when we were but walking she didn't by. even realize it was her dad. She turned <laughs> no. around, answered the question, question. turned back around, yeah. and then she's like... <laughs> Wait a Wait second. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you're so in your own thing. Right. Yeah. And it like I had literally just so I called my dad when we landed and he didn't answer. And during that time he texted him and was like, Why is she calling me? They're setting it up. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, is it safe to answer? And he was like, Yeah, she's just calling to complain about the rental car place. So he calls me back <laughs> and he had told me that he was in DC for a um he was uh, applying to be some manager at a new company. Sure. So I thought he was in dc so when i saw him no at the clue. fountains it yeah. wasn't like my brain didn't register that it was him because that he was supposed to be in dc <laughs> people that are a part of you literally <laughs> yeah. you see them and you're so focused on something else you didn't even yeah. realize like, yeah. 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 so then he's like do i have to get down on one knee and i was like uh yeah you better <laughs> yeah you better <laughs> so, that's an amazing story but, yeah. so but so that part of it's incredible <laughs> but what i found was really 
even cooler than that in my mind was the uniqueness of how you actually got married because yeah. people go to Vegas <laughs> all the time to get married and yeah. there's like little white chapels everywhere and all this stuff from what you see in movies and you hear in things and I you know, haven't been there and experienced it myself but how he actually did the the actual ceremony itself yeah. talk so, about that there were no dinner reservations <laughs> yeah, that so that's out the window yeah. <laughs> so, so what do you do for food because that's like feed me yeah right? so my dad um, he goes to Vegas like twice a year for conferences yeah. and stuff so he knows all the cool spots so he just took us okay so you did eat before yes, the next step well, I made sure there's time. Yeah. smart yes smart yes yeah. you would have been in trouble was, yeah, <laughs> yeah I, was, said, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I said yes and he's like great our appointment's in three hours <laughs> like mortal trouble yeah. Like, yeah. like a limb like, like come back without a limb yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and in an annulment right yeah yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> so we uh, we eat and then we get in the the jeep and uh, we're driving and we go out off the beaten path and like downtown not like the strip Vegas but like downtown Vegas which is not all that safe. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Didn't know that. Yeah. So, <laughs> and um, so I'm like sitting there looking around and I see this wedding chapel and it says drive through wedding <laughs> how cool is and that I, I was like because people uh, go to vegas all the time to get married right yeah. but like like the drive i've never even heard of the drive through yeah me either yeah <laughs> that was like talk about unique is, is this is this real yeah as she punches me in the shoulder, she's like, are we getting married in a drive through <laughs> Right, right. She punches me as hard right. as she can. You yeah. get punked at this point, right? Like, right, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. Also, <laughs> rewind, he made me wear black to my wedding. So <laughs> Right. You were just so underprepared for this yeah. because it's a huge special, like, surprise. Yeah. But, so now Hair's you go you go through the drive through <laughs> yep. right? And so what is that? You're both sitting in the car? Yep. Okay. And then my dad was in the back seat. And, as the witness, uh, right? As the witness, Yeah, yep. and her dad. And, <laughs> yeah, and the, uh, the, there's a stained glass window. Okay. Like a... A Wendy's cool drive-through <laughs> stained glass window that oh. opens up and the preacher's right there and Oh my <laughs> goodness. The... So he's inside mm -hmm. serving you your wedding. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> With a side of fries. Incredible. Yeah. Incredible. Have a side of fries. So yeah. this stained glass window did open up into two pieces like this, mm -hmm. like kind of thing, like the the regular windows do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then so is he in his unit like cloth yep. and like like thing and yep. yeah. he's just hanging out the window and the yep. full service. Yeah. Yes. And, and what were some other whether I'm sure they probably try to do it up a little bit. Was there any kind of like whether it was like music or was there something that happened as soon as it was like how what, what are yeah, the rest so of like, like you drive off into the sunset but not really you just drive out and come yeah. around and park somewhere else <laughs> and then you go out and um they do pictures and That's they have like a cool. huge thing yeah. set up and they've got flowers and one of the coolest ways i've ever heard someone get married before or yeah. a couple get married I like you appreciate yeah, it yeah i really do <laughs> i do i mean yes all the back to it i get it like being hangry and, and, yeah. and being frustrated and like being uh, upset all these things but like i really have never heard of anyone else doing that and so that story you can tell your kids tell your family tell your friends i mean that's that's unique well, he does that's badass <laughs> it's like, it's we yeah, got it's married in that was one of the things he first told me he was like yeah. yeah screw business screw this yeah this is how i got married yeah <laughs> favorite thing to tell people. <laughs> That's a so, great story. So now yeah. this was, uh, when was that wedding? When did you get married? September. Yeah. Just just last September. September, like a month ago, a month and change. Yeah. Um, no, oh, a, not year, even. a year. Oh, a year ago. A okay, year. got it. So okay. right before the Yep. Yeah. okay. September. September. Of 2018. September. 13th. Don't do it. Don't, I'm not trying to get you in 12. trouble. Wow. wow. <laughs> Man. Jesse, you got me. You oh, got me. Oh, oh, no. It is the 13th. No, it's not. The 12th. Yes, it is. Uh, you, like I said, the 12th. You remember going into this conversation. I was trying to hook a brother up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not trying to detract from that. So. You see how women always manipulate hey, hey, listen, she must we're, be we're easily manipulated. <laughs> so anyway, so, so now all these things have happened in a short amount of time. And, you know, all these stresses have probably hopefully brought you closer in terms of military, in terms of business, in terms of relationship. Um, so now we're looking at October 2019. And so there's a lot of great things going on. Let's talk about some of the things that we're about to uh, create. Like you have the, depending on how far you want to go in your businesses and the side businesses you're doing and the podcast and the nonprofit. Let's talk about some of that there. So Night Pro is still going really well. Yep. Um, she was able to build the residential side well enough while I was gone. Congrats. Yep. Yeah. Um, that I rough. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, any business is rough. It is. Yeah. I mean, and, to take an idea it. and then put it here. Right. And it's not be your idea. I mean, it, we collabed on it, but it wasn't really my It's the business. vision. Yeah, it's a vision right? thing. So yeah. it was just, it was hard. I'd be like, this person wants this. What do I do? And he'd be like, I don't know. Figure it out. And I'm like, but it's not my business. Right. right. <laughs> but her last name has already changed. Yeah. So it should be good. Sure. Yeah. 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 That's all you need. You're good to go. Right? <laughs> and I was like, but if I make the wrong decision, you come back and it's, and he's be like, it's my name. Like, right? go back to that. Right? Yeah. 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 It's yeah. his name, <laughs> right. not mine. Right. Right. So it was definitely like a, a huge, like, 
Oh, it was hard. <laughs> so to say she did grow it, yep. um, not only maintain it, but grew it uh, on the residential side. That's awesome. Um, so coming back while I was over there, I did about three fourths of my MBA program. Yep. Um, I read marketing and sales books. Like Leveling really, up where you correct. needed your, your strengths. So you'd be right. like some of maybe that maybe weaknesses or things you never knew about, at right. least getting better at those things. Right. Yeah. So it really made me focus on, or it helped me come back focused of yep. where I wanted to take the business moving forward. Um, so I branched essentially commercial side now. So we're, that's where we're starting to focus on commercial. Okay. The big highlight right now is Atlanta private schools. Awesome. Um, with the needs there that are evident with all the shootings that are happening in private school yep. or in schools in general. Yep. Um, private schools are, they don't have a school resource officer like public schools do. They, a lot of times their vice principal or their facilities manager. Someone on staff. Running security, step in. Yeah. Right. And running securities, I think, being a little bit uh, polite in what they're doing. I yeah. mean, they're busy with other stuff, so they don't have the time. And they don't even have the knowledge. I mean, my, back in my high school, and this was a very small community growing up in Boston, like the, the security headmaster is what he was called, was like my dad's best friend growing up. They played sports together. And he was also the gym teacher. So, like, they don't have the right. bandwidth to focus specifically right. on that one thing. Right. Yeah. And so that's where I'm focusing right now. Um, it's going pretty well so far, trying to build that. And then her last day at the police department was Tuesday of last week. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, yeah. So yeah. now she's moving Freedom. full time into helping with, well, I say full time, part time with Night Pro, yep. um, maintaining the residential side. Yep. And then starting on the getting the nonprofit that we filed for last October. Yep. The 501c3 finally came through into July. Um, obviously, August was shot because of me coming home yep. and a uh, beautiful week spent in Costa Rica. Congrats. So now, yep. September, um, beginning of September last month is when she really started hitting it hard um, and started rolling into the nonprofit. And so the, the, the nonprofit is, is finally, it's established. It's, it's being built and created. Talk a little bit about that. Yeah. So it took almost a year to get yeah. it built. The um, when we filed it in October, we did that because October is Domestic Violence Awareness Month. Okay. Um, and then the government shut down, and then they lost our paperwork, and then we had to refile. Of course. And <laughs> you know it's so, in the military. It's hard to yeah. wait. Yeah. Everything's like, yeah. you do fast for them, and they take forever for you. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> so uh, we finally got the 501c3. and um, I tried to, on top of everything else that I was doing, tried to grow the nonprofit while he was gone as well. And, wow. Wow. Um, Luckily, because I don't think, I think I would have overloaded my brain had I actually been able to do anything, sure. but nobody wants to deal with you when you don't have a 501c3 because there's no guarantee that yep. at the end of the year you get to write that off yep. in taxes. So right. um, it was kind of, I think, in hindsight, it was a blessing sure. that we didn't get the 501c3 right away because I was already, mm. you know, being overloaded with stuff. Um, but finally, um, beginning of September, we got to... Um, start working with things and um, look at grants and yeah. I'm learning how to grant write, which is a beast. It's a whole world. It's yeah. insane. Yeah, I've seen books on it. I've seen books yeah. that you can get that says how to obtain them, where to find them, what to yeah. say, how to do it. I mean, it's a whole thing. It is, it is, and there's like corporation grants, so like Coca-Cola or Publix or, you yeah. know, these huge corporations, they have grants that they give to people. And then there's federal grants yep. that the government gives you. and. They are two completely different types of It's incredible, the worlds that are out there that we don't know yeah. about until we're in them. Yeah. So this is, is, is a domestic violence-based cause? Yes. So, so what is it? Yeah. Um, so we are focused on women in domestic violence right now just due to logistics. Um, sure. Eventually, I think we would branch into men because men are also victims of Absolutely. domestic violence. Um, but we want to start lifestyle learning courses. So when you are in a situation of domestic violence and you leave, chances are you're going to a sh an emergency shelter. Yep. You can only be in those shelters for 90 days and then you are either back out on the streets or um, back in the home of the abuser. Yep. There are a few um, nonprofits around Cobb County and Atlanta that have housing, transitional housing, but I think it's the, the statistics are like 72,000 women are abused every year and you think you have Nonprofits 50 with 15, 15 to 50 homes, yeah. Yeah. apartments. There's not enough to meet the demand. Exactly. Yep. So um, we want to continue that growth of being able to provide housing for these women eventually, and um, as well as lifestyle learning classes. So learning how to budget your money, learning how to earn money, get a job, have um, yep. just resources available, counseling services, getting – some of these women don't even have their GED. Um, and so just different courses like that to – 
bring these women up. Yep. I think something that'll set us apart from uh, the different non- nonprofits around Cobb County and um, the Atlanta area is that we offer women's self-defense. That's huge. So I'm a, a it's called Rape Aggression Defense. Okay. And it's a national program. Yep. And so I'm an is instructor. It, acronym is RAD? Mm-hmm. Is that what that's? Okay. Yep. yep. And I'm a national instructor, or, yeah, national instructor for that program. And awesome. so I'll be able to bring that into the Nonprofit. It sounds like you're really empowering the breaking the vicious cycle, right? Mm-hmm. Like just getting them out of the system, giving them more time to to really mend. And, and you know, 90 days isn't long at all no. for anything. Relationships, businesses, and for someone who is broken, physically broken, mentally broken, emotionally broken, spiritually, if you can give them that long term structure and the you know the different services you put in place and all the different things you're doing to help them. So what does that look like? The vision of the nonprofit. So is there going to be some real estate holdings or something where um, you know you'll have X amount of units and they can live there and kind of get them ramped up? Like what does that look like? Yeah. So uh, we want to purchase or rent out um, apartment complexes, small like ten to fifteen home so type deals. The game plan is to start with a commercial building yep. for the Lifestyle Learning Center. That's really our first initial is trying to get the project or the programs off the ground okay. so she can start teaching these classes <clears throat> and really get the the RAD classes going because that's not offered but once a quarter okay. or so. Because she taught at PD and at KSU and they just said it's very limited to who can actually attend those. Sure. Um, so the, the commercial building would be first and then in the next two years or so we want to purchase a couple apartment complexes um, separate from the nonprofit uh, our real estate holdings company will purchase these not uh, these apartment complexes 10 units or so five to ten so that we can control the security attached night pro go equip it yeah essentially make it fort knox where it doesn't look like it but nobody's getting in to mess with these or re-victimize the individual which is huge mm-hmm. Absolutely. retaliation and all that exactly yeah. and yes. that's <clears throat> excuse me okay. that's where we want why we're focusing on women first because once we can establish multiple different apartment units then we can branch into the men but you can't put the men and the women in the same apartment right complex because yeah they've both been victimized by the other sex. Yep, so exactly. Um, once we are able to establish and build, that's when I think we'll bring the men's side into it. But but the benefit of buying the buildings themselves is uh, several nonprofits have, I guess, agreements with apartment complexes where, hey, we'll hold one apartment for you to do placement. Absolutely. But you can't secure it. You don't know who's next door to her or, right. or any of that. So right. by buying the, and owning the complex ourselves, it gives us that freedom yep. of securing, but also to reincorporate in the lifestyle learning. So we can do rent right. control where the first six months, there's no utilities for no cost for utilities. The nonprofit's paying for the rent, everything, everything yep. and then everything. everything. That's huge. And then yeah. once we get job placement for the individual, say in month six, we'll incorporate $100 for rent. $50 for utility. Start scaling it up a little right. bit. Yeah. And let them actually take what they're learning in the class. Because if you don't actually apply it, you're not going to remember it. Right. Just like anything yep. that we've done. So that way they can go ahead and apply it and start growing. So that's where it's the three to five year sustainability plan mm-hmm. where after three to five years of doing this on a consistent basis, by the time they hit year three, they should have all of that aspect figured out. Sure, you still might need to be in counseling and going through the self-defense mm-hmm. course. Sure. But... You and at least have a good concept of how to operate on your own. Yeah. yeah. And the, yeah. then the five-year plan comes in, whereas it, at three years, you may still be in your entry-level position and not be able to afford a place to live right. in the Atlanta area right. or anywhere near, or you don't have a car yet or something like that. So that's why it's a three- to five-year plan because... At three years, you should have all of this stuff, but you're just still not ready. It takes to go. time, and yeah. even even the healing piece of it, the trauma. Mm-hmm. I mean, that could take a lifetime to heal. Yeah, you don't know what that looks like. Yes, you, yeah. you can progress, and yes, you can start to be productive and help people and learn to love again or have relationships again. But at the end of the day, all that stuff is so damaging that it's a case by case basis. If you have that safe haven of of uh, security and controlling the environment and being able to implement processes and procedures so that they could follow these things and get them back on their feet and then yeah. get them running again and yeah. get them exactly. empowered. I think it's a huge noble effort. Um, so where does that stand today? So what's the next iteration of the nonprofit and like what are you looking forward towards either the end of Q4 2019 or even next year? Like where is it going to go? So right now we are looking at fundraising mainly. Okay. That yep. is a 
beast in and of its own, sure. learning how to fundraise. Grants and, take time. They do. Yeah. You know, we can apply, but it could be next year before we get a grant. And they also want, um, most grants want three to five years of audited financials. So that comes into play too. There, so there's all these moving may, parts. Yep. yep. So it may be three years before we get our first grant sure. because you have to have all these financials in place yep. and they have to have been audited by the IRS and done It's like this, a bank. So. They do their underwriting and they yep. want to see that their their money's going to go to the good use yeah. and like mm -hmm. someone who's viable versus yep. just someone who's asking for money. Exactly. Yep. And that you know how to control and spend your money wisely yep. and being able to you know, be financially smart and sound. Yep. Steward of money. Yep. Yeah. So um, really focusing hard on fundraising. So we're just looking for people in the community that want to not just give, but say, hey, come use our place for this. or yeah. Provide um, services or yeah. something. More yeah. as a partnership yeah. more than donors. Yeah, we're what not, we're doing, yeah. it's, a, it's such a passion project. It can't, yes, we'll take the donation, but we want partnerships to grow this community with a collaboration of all the nonprofits across Atlanta, mm -hmm. as well as influential individuals that can help us down the road. Sure. Job placement. Um, yep. and Resources sponsors. to place people. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So Smart. it's going to be more than just, mm -hmm. hey, give us a, a, you know, a thousand bucks. Because, yeah, that does a little bit for us, but in the long term, does it keep us sustainable to help them be sustainable? Yep. Yeah. And a lot of the, most of the, um, Nonprofits in Cobb County, they don't really collaborate and Isn't connect a lot. It's yeah. really strange because there are grants out there that if you're connected to two or three different nonprofits, Incredible. they'll give you all money. Wow. To wow. It's almost like there's a competition for donors. Yeah. yeah. You know, it, it, you still have to run a nonprofit like a business. Mm -hmm. So if we're getting donations from one person, uh, another nonprofit's not going to. Yep. So we're trying to get it to where. Like Dress for Success is a great example. They have a closet for clothing. They teach a lot of the similar lifestyle learnings. So what we want to do is bring them in, not necessarily reinvent the wheel. Hey, y'all already have these programs in place. Just come to our facility and yep. teach it all. Yeah. Um, and then we can, again, collaborate. So it's building that community because mm -hmm. it's going to take a community effort to actually make a difference in, in this type of impactful it area. Does. Yeah. It does. And I think that you're on the right path. And it may even be the bridge or the light for the one that's the – the nonprofit that becomes a collaborative nonprofit. So mm -hmm. maybe you share your vision with enough people that were uh, squirreling their own nuts away and like, I need my grants. But eventually if they understand that you can show them, hey, listen, if we partner together, we benefit by this and then our people benefit by this. So yeah. it could be a good way to, to get them connected. And yeah. maybe you're the the beacon of, of that for Cobb County, which would be really cool. So, yeah. so, um, so now we're talking about a podcast and, and what would that podcast look, sound, feel like for, what's the, what's the idea of it right now? So the idea right now is just being able to have an outlet for the nonprofit and the business yep. and being able to just talk about and not necessarily the vision and mission of the nonprofit, but the people that are going to be serviced or yep. people that can help the serviced services. <laughs> really, really um, we're going to hit the taboo thing that nobody yeah. wants to talk about. Domestic violence is shunned yeah. in mm -hmm. social circles because, oh, is. my gosh. But when you look at how many women have been affected by this, and men too, mm -hmm. when you look at how many people have been affected, it's astronomical. Yeah. So we want to talk about and bring into light yep. what the issues are, so that way you can actually build an awareness of what to look for. Red flags. Right. Even in your own, because a lot of it, it doesn't, it's not like you go to a bar and Johnny is like, I'm going to, you know, we're going to go home and I'm going to beat you up and yep. then you're going to, you know, marry me and we're going to have a horrible happy life right you know so it doesn't start it's like that it's a progression it, it, small it things is. and it gets worse they're and worse very charming in yep. the beginning and they're very but they're still controlling you can still see even though they're charming they're still controlling they're yep. still trying to get you to you know do these things so just to bring awareness of these red flags of things that uh, most people don't see until it's too late yep and yep. The, the name of the nonprofit and the podcast for that matter is from surviving to thriving i love it so the goal is to find individuals that are willing to speak their story yep. and hey i i went through this and i was abused but now i'm thriving i was surviving a terrible situation and now i'm thriving and this is how i did it and by getting that message out there and showing, again, it's an empowerment piece. Mm -hmm. By showing, hey, this you is doable do and you can do it, and you, you have to talk about it. Mm -hmm. So we're that's the goal is to reach out, find as many individuals that are willing to talk about that piece and sure. how to help yeah. the, our individuals, our clients more or less, um, try to figure out how they can go about it and mm -hmm. that it is something that you can succeed at. Yeah, because most women, it, they take seven to eight times 
to leave. So like they leave and then they come back and they leave seven to eight times before they're truly done and they leave. And how many of those times, not to cut you off, how many of those times mm -hmm. could potentially be a life ender? Exactly. Like a life threatening. Seven exactly. or eight times is a lot. Yeah. If it gets progressively worse each time and, and more physical, yeah, it right. it's always worse. Yeah. And so, you know, to be able to have a platform for these women to listen to, hey, I left and I'm okay. Yep. I'm le I left and I'm not just okay. Almost an I'm, ambassador. Yeah. And they tell the story. Maybe you have mm -hmm. them on the show and they can yeah. share their power and all these things. And so yeah. that's huge. And so, you know, maybe helping women, you leave on the third time instead of the eighth time. Right. You leave on the fourth time. Yep. You know, just don't go back again. You know, right. just something to that they can listen to that may not. Something clicks yeah. with them yeah. to hopefully it shows, hey, this is a great route and a good avenue to actually mm -hmm. successfully. And I'm hoping that's where Night Pro can help with that. With our background, you know, everybody I employ is a veteran or a police officer. So if they're scared that they don't have the support, the physical support to yep. get out of situation, we'll come in and pull you out of the volatile situation. Mm -hmm. That's where we really want to play off each other really well. Yep. So that way, Yes, it's scary to leave, but hey, you have this support group not only to go to, but to help get you out. Yep. Yeah, having the resources and and, exactly. and being uh, having that awareness. Yeah, and, and so I, yeah. yeah, I think a podcast is key because we're only going to be able to help people in Cobb County. Yep. with the podcast, we can help people around the world. Around the world. And there's so much that can happen from there too, yeah. from from scaling up the nonprofit to the businesses to the awareness. Um, you're you're only limited by the amount of people you can get in front of, and so that yeah. podcast and social media are going to be huge tools. You mentioned doing TikTok stuff earlier too, which is really fun. <laughs> Haven't gotten on there yet, but um, but uh, I've seen a lot of cool stuff on TikTok. I think Will Smith's crushing it on there. It's a lot of cool. I just saw him yeah. pop up. Yeah, and it, it's yeah. such an interesting platform because it it seems to be that younger generation, like Instagram used to be. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. We're we're Facebook age. Yep. And then Instagram. Mm -hmm. I was MySpace. My I was, was going to okay. say, I was, I was, was, that I was AOL. <laughs> Dial up. Okay. A, A, I'm 30. Yeah. I'll be 38 yeah, in December. A, so AOL was like, yeah. and yeah. they get into a chat room was yeah. the coolest thing in the world. And that was high school. Right. Yeah. And high I remember school. those days. Yeah. yeah. That was before her time. Well, yeah. well, I had an AIM. <laughs> I, <laughs> it's a messenger. I had, uh, yeah, I had a MySpace. Okay. You had to find yeah. me on my top MySpace eight. MySpace doesn't even exist anymore. Like it's gone. I don't know. Tom disappeared. Tom with the most friends. It was like, it was like Tom never made us delete our stuff. Right, 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 right. Yeah, like these little memes. Yeah. <laughs> Poor Tom. He's probably a billionaire somewhere. Right. Just chilling. So, and TikTok's really the next platform. For sure. So, we want to engage on um, both companies, and mm -hmm. we're trying to do a blended. She has hers, I have mine. Yep. The nonprofit's going to have one where it kind of shows there is fun involved in what we're doing, which is sure. all serious all the time. And yeah. she's really good at the marketing piece. Um, I'm not. <laughs> she judges me for my- Play to your strengths and, yeah. no, and <laughs> offset your strengths. And, and a lot of the TikTok side of things is dancing. And yeah. I can't dance, so- Which is perfect. Right, <laughs> right? It's even better, right? Like you can do something fun. Yeah. That's a catch a trend now, yeah. yeah. You can go viral, do something fun. Right. Do Old Tom yeah. Road or something, <laughs> um, right? Um, so so, so what, what's a go home message, um, you know, for, for people in any of these avenues? And then the best way to reach out and connect with both of you. Man, um, I think the message should be, you know, not only be aware, but know that there's a path. Sure. You know, there's always a light at the end of the tunnel. We'll be able to help you find that. Um, I think that's what everybody really needs to re recognize is be aware of your surroundings, like you said at the beginning, and and push until you get to the light. Yep, mm -hmm. that's huge. Um, I know there's support there. Yes, people. Mm -hmm. absolutely. Yep. As for Connect, he is at Night Pro LLC on all Everything. social media platforms. Easy but, enough. So yeah. K N I G H T P R O L L C. Yep. yep, got it. On That's everything, in LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, Snap, Twitter, not Snapchat, Twitter, TikTok. Uh, TikTok. Is this like a TikTok <laughs> too? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's on TikTok. It's, it's awful. It's, it's awesome. amazing. I'm gonna go check you follow out. him on TikTok. It's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> if you need a laugh for the day, <laughs> go to TikTok. Um, and then for right now, the nonprofit has. Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, and it's too it's thriving. Too thriving, it? and then um, too thriving. T O or T O O. T O. T O. Okay. Um, if you just look up surviving to thriving on those ones, I don't think they're matched yet. Yeah, we're still getting yeah. through those glitches of yeah. uh, getting all the social and the website to be. Um, and our website's not act. even launched yet, so okay. it's still yeah. under construction. I mean, it's. All very new, so we're trying to build all that out right now. All that stuff will come. Yeah, 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 it's, yeah it's surviving to thriving on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Love it. Anything for a go home message for you to add to, or? I think just 
I think his go home message goes to both. There's a light at the end of the tunnel, whether it's through personal security or just your life in general, just keep pushing forward. And no matter where you're at, you don't have to be in an abusive relationship to be in a stressful situation. So just keep pushing forward. That's right. And there are support around you. So feel free uh, for those that are listening and watching on the show, reach out to Zach and Heather for all that they're doing. There's uh, so much they can do to help you. If you're in a tough spot or if you want to learn more about their business, what they're doing, you could be local to Georgia. You could be worldwide if you need some help. That is Zach Knight. This is Heather Knight. I'm Jesse T. Thanks so much for joining our episode this week. Make sure to tune into next week's new episode. Take care.